Hi, thanks for joining us today. We are here with Jenny Shacko. She is the Director of Physician Practices and Laura Krieger, Senior Project Leader, both with Beacon Medical Group. And we're here today to talk about the Beacon Mobile COVID Testing Unit, um, which was launched back in mid-April, almost two and a half months ago. And we're here to talk about how it's going. So Laura, let's start with you and tell us a little bit about the number of people we've tested, the sites we've been at, and, and really the impact that we've had in the community. Thanks, Heidi. As you mentioned, we started uh, mid-April. We actually started on Wednesday, April 15th. And since that time, we have tested just over 1,650 50 community members. And out of all of those that have we tested, we have seen some positive COVID uh, results. And we've been able to work with those community members on self-quarantining and getting the additional care that they need. When we started in mid-April, um, we initially started with three locations. And we quickly realized that there was a, a larger community need. And so uh, we started with five days a week going out uh, throughout the community in St. Joe County and in Elkhart County. And when we first started, our mobile unit was one of the first in the area. Um, we had many community organizations, uh, churches, schools, fire departments reach out to Beacon to offer their parking lots to actually host the mobile unit because there was um, you know, some anxiety, and I think initially on, I think now uh, community members are a little bit more educated. Um, there may still be some anxiety, but at least uh, not only Beacon is in the community, but there are um, access to other uh, testing facilities in the area. And so uh, initially we kept a running list of all of those that contacted us offering their parking lots. We've worked very closely with Beacon Community Impact to identify areas that there is, is a need for us to be in the community. Um, and our host uh, sites that we've been in their parking lots, they've been so gracious in uh, helping suggest traffic patterns for our mobile unit, as well as helping, helping us market uh, the days and times and locations of where we're going to be throughout the community. So 1,650, that's a lot of people in two and a half months. Talk a little bit about uh, the importance, I guess, of these numbers. I mean, with, are these people and, you know, community residents that would have been tested otherwise? Or did some have, do some have difficulty in transportation? Or maybe they don't have a primary care physician to go see? Talk a little bit about the folks that we're seeing out there. Uh, we're, we're seeing um, everyone in the community, really, from, from those that have insurance to those that do not have insurance. And with the uh, mobile unit, Beacon Health Foundation um, has uh, operationalized it, and uh, they're, they're getting it funded with community sponsors and grants. And so we are able to test anyone, whether they have insurance or not. Jenny, talk a little bit about what it's like to be out there, to be actually at the unit. Um, talk about the dedication of the team that's out there and even some of the gratitude, I guess, that, that people have expressed. Sure. So the gratitude is really on multiple levels. So the staff is happy um, to be serving the community as well as the community members really needing um, service. And they just love us being there. Like we hear a, a lot of thank yous and um, just gratitude of, of Beacon being in the community and vulnerable populations, um, helping them get tested when they probably otherwise would not be. In addition, uh, so it started April 15th, and if you remember tax day, you would remember that it was snowing and raining. It was a combination of the day, and our staff were bundled up and had PPE on and ready to serve. And now it's beautiful and sunny and 90s, and they're out there the same. We've had the same group of people um, almost consistently throughout the last two and a half months. And so it just really shows dedication um, from the staff to do a job that maybe others may choose not to do. Kind of like the mailman, right? Snow, yeah. rain, wind, heat. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about these folks, too, um, who are specially trained uh, and volunteered, really, to be serving at the 
COVID mobile unit? Sure, we have everything from registration and community impact workers, giving out information and registering the patients from um, nurses and medical assistants and athletic trainers who are really doing the screening and testing portion. And then we've even had a resident from Memorial Hospital's residency program come out and spend a couple days with us because they were um, on a rotation that allowed them to come out and really see what community outreach is like. And like I asked Laura, the importance of the mobile unit in the community, how, how would you describe it from what you've seen? I think I think it's really important. So we really focus on the areas in which um, don't always seek care and because of social determinants and other factors. And so we look at um, information with community impact and we make decisions on where we're gonna go based off of um, high risk um, populations and inability to have transportation, um, multiple people in housing, the Amish population. We have focused on all of these areas and you know, it's Beacon's commitment to focus on the underserved as well as areas that, that can't get out. Um, and let's give a shout out if we can to a few of those organizations, entities, community partners without which uh, really we wouldn't have the mobile clinic running this long. Sure. Oh, absolutely. So Beacon uh, Community Foundation, Beacon Foundation is integral in securing grants and organizational scholarships and, fu and funding so that we can continue to serve the community. Without our partnerships within the community and sponsorships, we would not be able to, to have this service. And it continues to be funded and it continues to be important to not just our, us as Beacon, but our community partners. And so they continue to assist us in funding. Another important thing is it's just not the medical group, it's the whole system. So without other managers and directors allowing their staff to come and work with us, we wouldn't have staff. Without Beacon Logistics, we wouldn't have transportation or a trailer. Um, without you know security, we wouldn't have assistance with um, keeping everyone safe as well as traffic um, concerns and things like that. And so it's really more than just a couple people pulling this together. It has taken a significant amount of work to get it up and running. And it's, it's running like a really well-oiled machine at the moment. You know, I also wanted to ask you guys to describe the process once someone arrives. Let's, let's talk about that for a quick second in case there's anybody watching this and maybe a little fearful of being tested, of going to the testing unit, mm -hmm. and even the swabbing. I know we had talked about how the swabs have changed uh, from April. So whichever one of you would like to tackle that question, what's the same or what's changed about the process? Sure, so I'll go ahead and tackle that. Um, a lot of things are similar, like um, you pull up and we start the line at whatever time is posted and it's first come first serve. We will test everyone until um, we're out of swabs or the end of our testing time. And the first person that they'll see upon arrival is a community impact worker, which will give out handouts regarding self-quarantine, about the swabbing process, about um, the CDC's recommendations, as well as um, numbers to call in case they have questions. And then they are greeted with a registration person will take their ID um, or insurance card, neither of which is required but recommended, and we um, take their information down so we can enter them into our system. And then they go on to the um, screening process and they get screened to ensure they have symptoms. And then they move on finally to the swabbing process, which takes probably less than two minutes. It's now a self swab, and so um, the swabber attendant will open the package and pick up one Q-tip, give it to the member, or the member will actually take it out of the package, swab their nose, and um, by instructions under self-observation of the, of the swabber attendant, and then um, put it into the vial, and it gets marked with um, the appropriate demographics, and it gets moved on to the lab. Thank and you. then they leave. Yeah, thank you for describing that. Laura, from what you've seen out there, any reason to be fearful of the process whatsoever? No, not at all. I mean, it's, it's actually simpler than even 
uh, seeking treatment actually physically in an office because you're, you're in the comfort of your own vehicle. And um, we, you know, we ask that you stay in your car. One other thing that I did want to share um, is the over 1600 uh, community members that we have serviced. Um, community impact has also handed out um, almost 2300 masks that have been donated to Beacon through the Health Foundation. So it's really community members serving community members. Um, and I know early on masks were hard to come by and I know now uh, more community members are, are digging in and you know grabbing out their sewing machines and, and creating their own. But I know early on especially, it, it was, it, it was a, a pretty good need. And that's fantastic given the mask requirements now that we have both in St. Joe County and in Elkhart County. Mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you, thank you both. Jenny, Laura, appreciate it and keep up the great work out in the field. Thank you so much anytime.